day grade livings. Welcome to your second lesson on quantitative aspects of chemical change in week 20. In this lesson we're actually going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is learn about percentage composition and the second is percent purity. So what I'd like you to do is watch the video where they explain how to do percentage composition and then go through two examples where I teach you how to do percent purity. So let's do that now. Percentage composition. Percentage composition works out the percentage by mass of each element within a compound. And it can be worked out just as you work out any other percentage. So you take the mass of the element that you're looking at, you divide it by the total mass of the compound, and you multiply it by 100 over 1. Because we don't need to work with the actual mass of the element, we can use molar mass. Remember that molar mass is the mass of one mole of that element. So if you've got one mole of the compound, you'll have the mass of one element and the ratio of the mass of the compound. So just use your molar mass figures and you can work out the percentage of the element. And I'll show you an example. So let's look at water, H2O. If we look at the molar mass of water, it's 18.0 grams per mole. Oxygen is 16 and hydrogen is 1. Each of those is 1, so that makes 2 plus 16, which is 18. So, to work out the percentage of oxygen, we work out the molar mass of oxygen divided by the molar mass of the entire compound, which is water, times 100 over 1. So the molar mass of oxygen is 16 divided by 18 times 100 over 1, which equals 89%. So to work out the percentage of hydrogen, remember there's two hydrogens, so we need to have the molar mass of the two hydrogens divided by the molar mass of the entire compound, which is 2 divided by 18 times 100 over 1, which equals 11%. Now you can check your answers whenever you're working out percentage composition because the addition of your answers always has to equal 100% because the total weight of the compound needs to equal 100% which e with each of its components adding up to that 100%. So have a go at working out question 24 which asks you to work out the percentage composition of sodium chloride and the percentage composition of potassium nitrate. Pause this, check your answers, I'm going to work through the answers after this. So sodium chloride Sodium chloride, the total molar mass is 58.5 because chlorines is 35.5 and sodiums is 23.0. So to work out the percentage of sodium, we take the molar mass of sodium, which is 23, and divided by the total molar mass of sodium chloride, which is 58.5. So 23 divided by 58.5 times 100 over 1 and that equals 39.3%. To work out of the chlorine, we do the same thing. So percentage of chlorine is the molar mass of chlorine divided by the molar mass of sodium chloride times 100 over 1, which equals 35.5, which is the molar mass of chlorine, divided by the total molar mass of the sodium chloride, which is 58.5 times 100 over 1, and it equals 60.7. Remember, double check that your answer is correct by making sure that these answers add up to 100%. Potassium nitrate, again, just write down the information that you know, which is just looking on your periodic table to find out the individual components molar mass and the total molar mass of the compound. Once we've got that, we can work out the percentage of potassium by dividing the molar mass of potassium by the molar mass of potassium nitrate, which is 39.1 divided by 101.1, which equals 38.7. The percentage of nitrogen, again, we do the same thing. So it's 14 divided by 101.1 equals 13.8%. And oxygen. Remember, there's three oxygen in potassium nitrate, so we need to multiply the molar mass of oxygen by three and divide that by 101.1. So we get 48 divided by 
times 100 over 1 and it equals 47.5. Again, just check that these guys all add up to 100% and you know you've got your correct answer. Back to grade 11, so you should actually understand the percentage composition is actually very, very easy to do. Now what we're going to do is move on to something called percentage purity. Now percentage purity is basically a measure of how pure your sample is. And it's calculated by percentage purity equals the mass of the compound divided by the mass of the sample times by 100 to get your percent. Okay, so let me go through two examples that they like giving and it helps you understand exactly what we're talking about with percentage purity. So it says here, shells contain calcium carbonate, right? As well as other minerals. So if you pick up a shell, it's mainly made up of calcium carbonate, but it has other minerals. A sander, a sander wants to know how much calcium carbonate there is in her shell. So let me just change this to pen so I can underline what I want to do. She finds the shell weight to be 5 grams, right? And after performing some experiments, she finds the mass of the calcium carbonate and the crucible. Crucible is just really a container that she has kept the mass the, uh, kept the shell in is 3.2 grams, and the mass of the crucible itself, this container, is 0.5 grams. And they want to know how much calcium carbonate is in the shell. They want to know what is the percentage purity. So first of all, let's go back for a second. Remember they said percent purity is the mass of the compound over the mass of the sample times by 100. So, let's write that down. Percent purity equals the mass of the compound, okay, over the mass of the sample times by 100 over 1, because we want percentage, right? So, the compound that we're talking about is your calcium carbonate, right? Is your calcium carbonate. And the sample that we want is the shell. Right. Everybody happy with that? So that's the shell. So let's now talk about this. First of all, to get the mass of the compound, do you agree that the mass of the compound is actually the mass of the calcium carbonate? Carbonate equals what? It equals the mass of the calcium carbonate plus the crucible, in other words the container, minus the mass of the crucible. Okay, because what they're saying is that we've got a container, let's try and draw a container, you know my drawing stack, and then I've got some calcium carbonate in here, right? The mass of the crucible itself is 0.5 grams and the mass of this crucible plus the calcium carbonate is going to be 3.2 grams so therefore the mass of the calcium carbonate of the calcium carbonate CaCO3 is going to be what? It's going to be 2.7 grams okay happy with that now all we want to do is find the percentage purity so that's pretty easy because percentage purity is the mass of the compound, which in this case is 2.7, 2.7, over the mass of the sample, which is 5 grams, times by 100 over 1. Okay, and then we can pop that in our calculator and we end up with 54%. So 54% of the shell is made up of calcium carbonate. Okay, not too bad, hey? Right, so that's pretty easy. Let's do one more example just to make sure. Okay, I will have the periodic table out there because we need it for this example. Now it says limestone is mostly calcium carbonate. Limestone is obviously, um, actually, I don't know if you've heard of the White Cliffs of Dover, but the reason they're white is because of the limestone. And this is, again, mostly calcium carbonate. Isidore wants to know how much calcium carbonate is in the sample of limestone. He finds that the sample weighs 3.5 grams. He then adds concentrated hydrochloric acid to the sample. An equation for this reaction is calcium carbonate plus hydrogen chloride gives you carbon dioxide, calcium chloride plus 
water. Okay, and it says if the mass of the calcium chloride produces 3.6 grams, what is the percentage purity of the limestone sample? In other words, they want to know how much calcium carbonate was actually what percentage of that were made up the limestone. Okay, so remember what's the first thing we need to do? We don't, in the reactions like this, we don't work in grams, we work in moles, right? So we know that the number of moles of calcium chloride produced, okay, produced, is equal to what? Number of moles is mass over the molar mass. So we need to find the molar mass of calcium chloride. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the molar mass of calcium. And if you look here, you can see that's 40.08. And chlorine is 35.45. So calcium is 40.08. So let's write it up here. Calcium is 40.08. And chlorine, we said, was 35. 0.45. These are the molar masses of calcium chloride. So therefore, the number of moles is going to be the mass, which is 3.6, divided by the molar mass, which is going to be 40.08 plus 2 times 35.45. Why 2 times? Because there's 2 chlorines for every 1 calcium. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get out our calculators. And when we do that, we find, okay, let's get a calculator out. And we're going to go 2 times 35.45 equals plus 40.08 equals, and that gives us 110.98 over 110. 0.98, which equals, and again we need our calculator, so we're going to go 3.6 divided by 110.98, and that gives us 0 0.03 moles, because remember we always just go to two decimal places, so that's 0 0.03 moles, so that equals 0 0.03 moles. So we have produced 0.03 moles. Now we have to go back to our calculation and we see, well, the ratio of this is one mole of calcium carbonate forms one mole of calcium chloride, right? But we didn't form one mole, we formed 0.03 moles. So the ratio is one to one. So if we formed 0.03 moles of calcium chloride, then how many moles did we use? We used 0.03 moles of calcium carbonate. Right. Excellent. So now what do we have to do? We have to convert this into grams. Why do we have to convert it into grams? Because if we found the percentage purity, remember the percentage purity is what? It is the mass of our compound, which in this case is again calcium carbonate, over the mass of the sample. Okay, but we know the mass of the sample, they gave it to us. It was 3.5 grams, that there was 3.5, right. So now we need to find the mass of calcium carbonate. So again we're going to use number of moles is mass over molar mass. The number of moles we have is 0.03, but we need to get the molar mass of calcium carbonate, okay? So we go number of moles, 0.03, times by the molar mass of calcium carbonate. Well, calcium we know is 40.08 plus, and let's go down, and then carbon, they're telling us is 12.01, so we've got 12.01. Plus, how many oxygens do we have? We have three. So it's three times oxygen. And if we go look, we see that oxygen, where is it? There it is, is 16. Okay, so it's three times 16. Close bracket. And then now we get out a calculator. And we go, right, let's have a look at this. Let's clear it just to make it easier to see. So we've got 
3 times 16 equals plus 12.01, that's the carbon, plus 40.08. So that is 100.09 is the molar mass of calcium carbonate. And I'm now timesing it by 0 0.03. And I get 3, exactly 3, 3.0027, which rounds off to 3. So I get equals the mass of the calcium carbonate is 3 grams. Have I finished? No, because what did they ask for? They asked, what is the percentage purity of the limestone sample? So again, I'm just going to change colors just so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to change to purple. So we can say, okay, percentage purity is what? It is the mass of the calcium carbonate, which we know is 3, divided by the mass of the sample, 3.5, and then we times it by 100 over 1. Okay, and then we get out our calculator for the final time for the sum, and we say, right, what do we have? We've got 3 divided by 3.5 equals, and then we times it by 100 to change it into percentage, whoops, not 1,000, 100. And we get 85.71. So it equals 85.71% of calcium carbonate. So the percentage of calcium carbonate that is in the limestone is 85.71. So basically, limestone is mainly, like they said, mostly calcium carbonate. It is 85.71%. So right grade 11s, you guys need to now go and practice both your percentage composition and your percentage purity and make sure you can do the questions. They like asking these questions in the exams because they're nice and easy actually and to get good marks and you just need to know the basics, okay? So please go practice, practice, practice and then do the examples at the end of the assessment. Have a lovely day.